So a few months ago, I walked into my daughter's room, and she was on the phone with a friend, and the phone call went a little something like this. Hey, um, can I sleep over tonight? <laughs> Please. My mom has another protest tomorrow, and it's raining. <laughs> My day job is as a science teacher, but in my off time, I plan protests, and I drag my kids along. I drag them here today because I think it's important for them to really see civics in action. Now, do you know what one of the largest obstacles I face in my organizing work is? White liberals. There has been a massive upswing in progressive political action within the past few years. And just earlier this month, we have had some historic elections. Here in Boston, we elected our very first black congresswoman in Ayanna Presley. Puerto Rican Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez will soon be the youngest sitting member of Congress. And across America, voters elected two Muslim women, two Native American women, and in fact, over 100 women in general. These women are scientists, they're teachers, they're nurses, they're veterans, they're mothers, they are daughters, they are sisters. From the Women's March to the March for Science, millions of Americans have been out in force to demand change. And they voted that change. But there's a problem. There's a problem because there are people missing from the picture. See, white liberals and progressives love electing minorities. You get to go to the ballot box. You get to take a selfie with your I voted sticker. You get to pat yourself on the back that you made change. And, the, you, and you believe that we are all moving forward together. But how can we all be moving forward together when there are people missing from the picture? As a woman of color, I live with both sexism and racism. While the lightness of my skin gives me a blanket of privilege, I exist within an inflection point where I am able to look into both worlds, and they really are two different worlds which is why I can honestly say that the majority of white liberals and progressives believe that they are doing the right thing. They believe that they are speaking for the masses. But there is just one problem with that. People of color aren't voiceless. And by taking our voice away, the works of people of color is co-opted at best and erased at worst. During the recent hearings for the confirmation of Justice Kavanaugh, actress Molly Ringwald tweeted that women should take a knee in protest. And a poem by Jasmine Carr was widely circulated with the word scream crossed out and the word vote in its place. Taking a knee has been a visible and peaceful protest started by Colin Kaepernick to fight the brutality that communities of color endure by police officers on a daily basis. Jasmine Carr is a Sikh poet who ironically wrote the poem in question to rail against the erasure of Sikh voices by the media. By co-opting these works, 
the white community has effectively told these communities of color that their concerns just aren't as important. The reality, though, is that these examples of co-opting occurred due to ignorance. Ignorance of the works being done by communities that the co-opters just don't belong to. Because if white liberals and progressives aren't aware of the work being done, they assume that it isn't getting done. Earlier this summer, there was a national call for a protest to fight the separation of families that was occurring along the southern border. Here in Boston, March Forward, the organization behind the 2017 Women's March took it upon themselves to lead that effort. And this created a massive outcry within the immigrant community who felt as though their platform had been stolen from them. After days of negotiations, March Forward conceded the lead to jobs with justice. And by doing so, March Forward cemented themselves as allies, not saviors. Jobs with Justice is a community organization that has built relationships within the immigrant community for decades. And once they had secured their platform, Jobs with Justice gave it away. They gave it to those people who had been most directly affected. Every single speaker on the stage that day was a person of color who had been directly affected by the current administration's immigration policies. Because for Jobs with Justice, it came down to just a few simple truths. The real work in organizing isn't in marching. It's not in politics and spectacle. It's not in yelling from a stage. The real work begins at the community level. The real work is the grit of boots on the ground. The real work is much more quiet. So what do we do? How do we make this movement more accessible to people of color? We spend more time listening. Okay, I'm a science teacher. We're going to do an experiment. <laughs> For the next 30 seconds, I want everyone to be completely silent. Now, bear with me. While we're silent, I want you to take note of how you're feeling, open your ears, and really listen. Are you ready? Could you feel it? Could you feel your chest tightening a bit as the silence washed over you? It was uncomfortable. Silence is uncomfortable. But once it settled and you really started to listen, you started to hear all of the sounds that were in the room before you had ever noticed them. Could you hear them? The hum of the lights, or maybe how your seat creaked when you adjusted, or the sounds of papers rustling, or maybe the sounds of hands rubbing together. All of those sounds were there before, but you couldn't hear them while I was busy talking. But the moment I stopped talking, all of those sounds became more apparent, loud even. And the same thing happens when we start paying attention to who isn't being heard. 
Now, this is an intentional and uncomfortable shift. We live in an individualistic, capitalistic society that was built on the tenets of white supremacy. It is ingrained in us with a need to be first, to be right, to be louder than everyone else. But in order to be first in line and first to be heard, someone must be left behind. And almost always those someones are people of color. So let's make the conscious and uncomfortable decision to break free from those societal trappings. When the students of Marjory Stoneham Douglas High School put out a call for youth to organize against gun violence, I was lucky enough to be one of the adults asked to lead and speak at the effort here in Boston. That effort was led by a diverse group of 16 to 21 year olds. They came from different backgrounds and different worlds and they had never met prior to this effort. They were a queer Mexican American woman originally from Parkland and now a student at Northeastern University. A 17 year old white high school senior from Andover, Massachusetts a 16-year-old Haitian-American girl from High Park, a 16-year-old Puerto Rican boy from Roxbury, and a young Asian-American woman, current Northeastern student, and Marjorie Stoneham Douglas alumni. These students broke free of the divisiveness and bigotry of the adults in the room, and they planned the rally that they wanted. What got lost in many March for Our Lives rallies was the fact that in cities across America, people of color live with gun violence in their communities on a daily basis. The students here in Boston knew that, and so they actively engaged those populations. They planned a speaker program that looked like the city they called home. And since the cameras have stopped rolling, their work has continued. They have registered thousands of people to vote. They have marched 50 miles from Worcester to Springfield to call out Smith & Wesson. They pushed the ERPO bill, which takes guns away from those deemed unstable, through the House where it was languishing, through the Senate, and to the governor's desk. And they did it all by including people from all backgrounds and working with more established groups instead of for them. So when the next injustice breaks, and we all know that it will, instead of building a shiny new table, find one that's already been built and ask yourself how you can support it. Find who was talking before anyone else was listening and pass them the mic. It can be uncomfortable, but when it happens, it can be magic. And don't we all need a little bit of magic? Thank you. <laughs>